Bladder cancer is the fourth most common cancer in men, which about has 81,000 new cases uh, every year in the US only. And this is estimated number for 2018 and approximately 16,000 deaths related to bladder cancer only in the US estimated for 2018 especially when it has spread metastasized to other organs, it has usually poor prognosis with only 10 to 15 percent of patients being alive at five years when the bladder cancer is spread. So bladder cancer is the most expensive cancer to treat on a per patient basis from diagnosis to death for various reasons. For example, patients require frequent diagnostic and monitoring procedures like endoscopies, cystoscopies, and also may require multiple therapeutic modalities like surgeries, follow-up chemotherapy, sometimes radiation therapy, and other therapies. And overall, this can incur significant burden to the patient, family, society, and the healthcare systems worldwide. Bladder cancer is a very challenging cancer to treat, especially if it's in advanced disease setting meaning most of the bladder cancer cases are diagnosed in the earlier stage and can be managed frequently with resections of the tumor, with endoscopic approach inside the bladder, with or without intravesical into the bladder therapies. But when the bladder cancer has advanced further, and particularly it has spread to other organs metastasized, we do not have cure and curative options for those patients. However, we still try to prolong their lives, shrink the cancers, delay their growth, and provide symptom control and optimal quality of life. It's still a very uh, a difficult to treat disease. Even with chemotherapy and immunotherapy, many patients may not respond or may not benefit. And even if they respond, the response does not last forever. It's not very durable. Moreover, some patients may have side effects from treatments. So we have an urgent need to identify novel, safe and effective therapies for patients with advanced bladder cancer. We have designed this innovative clinical trial utilizing a novel PARP inhibitor, trying to take into advantage you know, these particular molecular features of bladder cancer and try to evaluate whether using this compound, this pharmacology agent, can achieve shrinkage of the cancer, can lead to responses, as we call them, and of course, whether it can delay growth of the cancer and prolong what we call progression-free survival and overall survival, when, whether it prolongs life. This same compound uh, uh, call, is called Rucaparib, is already FDA approved for patients with metastatic ovarian cancer. Bladder cancer, has a very complex molecular biology with a lot of aggressive features in the histological and molecular level. And that is why it's very important to dissect and analyze this biology and learn more about the features and unique identities of bladder cancer to develop novel, effective, and safe therapies. We are in urgent need of what we call predictive biomarkers. These are, again, biological surrogate markers, genes, proteins, etc., that can give us some clues of how patients may respond to a particular therapy. So we can be helped in that approach to select patients for the right treatment at the right time. If we had a marker that can be detectably, detectable easily in the blood, then we can, with a simple blood draw, try to identify it, quantify it, and use it for treatment decisions after we validate it. Colleagues uh, and myself embarked on this study that we're uh, uh, presenting at the annual ASCO meeting in 2018, looking at the presence of uh, cell-free circulating cancer DNA, the DNA of the cancer cells that can be floating in the blood without the presence of cells. And this DNA can be detected and if we detect it, we can try to quantify the presence of it and also interrogate the presence of particular mutations, changes in the DNA code that can give us answers in those biomarkers. And we also uh, try to do some analysis to try to correlate 
whether mutations in particular genes may be associated with how long patients live. We call this evaluation of the prognostic value of particular biomarkers. And this can stimulate further discussions and of course can potentially lead to potential treatment targets and also other biomarkers that can help us select patients for the right treatment at the right time in the clinic.